Hello. Good evening, everyone. I am. I apologize because I lost my voice, so you're going to have a very hard time hearing and understanding me. So I won't be doing a whole lot of talking this evening. I hope that you can hear enough uh, to understand what I'm saying. Unfortunately, I, uh, I lost my voice. So I'm going to leave it up to Valerie and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid to speak up, but I'm good. <laughs> we'll hold it down for you. Thank you. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Hi, Val. Good evening. Do you see uh, Diana Soriano here? Hi, Diana. Hi, uh, this is Carmen. Anyway, good evening, everyone. I'm Carmen Martinez, chair of the Transportation Committee. Uh, again, I apologize. I'm not going to be very good at communicating uh, this evening. Okay. So you just uh mute. Okay. Yeah. Hey Carmen. So you want to do my own time, right? Sorry, but so again, I'm in my office. I'm in the side. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to our transportation committee meeting. Um, again, Carmen Martinez, chair, for those that are new, they have never been on to our meeting before. Um, we've got representatives from uh, DOT. I see we have Diana Soriano and uh, Paul Mercurio from DOT. Who else is from DOT? Marvin is a DDC. Marvin Pagar, DDC. Any other agency representatives? Uh, this is Casey Grell from DOT as well. Hi, Casey. Sam? Thank you. Uh, uh, Samuel Elling, uh, senior. Okay. Uh, uh, 20 years. So we got DOT and DDC. Hi, Carmen. It's Felice. Hi, Felice. Yeah, I think I see it on there. Um, well, there seems to be some background stuff. Is everybody muted? Because we seem like there's another conversation going on somewhere with someone. <laughs> well, I can't talk what everybody else is on. What's wrong with your voice? I lost my voice. I had a very Who are you screaming at? Well, who are you screaming at? I was in, um, I was away. So okay, I, that was fun. Yeah. It was a way, so going from the heart to the cold, from the cold to the heart, it affected my voice. So now I put my voice. So you're having warm, uh, warm water uh, with lemon, honey, you know, some tea. Yes? Uh, no, I'm taking all the remedies you all give. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, now you stay well. I'll try it more. I'll try it more. So, anyway, uh, I think we have enough uh, committee members. Uh, we have a quorum so we can begin. Um, again, I want to welcome our representative and 
in the interest of anyone, everyone's time, I just want to um, begin by opening the floor to DOT. I know DOT has uh, the Washington Reconstruction Project, um, capital project presentation that they would like to make. Uh, and I guess DDC is part of that presentation as well. Yeah, so oh, I'll be Diane. presenting for Washington and I'm joined by colleagues from DDC and from AIA, AI engineers who are our um, design consultant for the project. Okay. Yes, uh, Casey will take the lead over the presentation today and I'll be on uh, for any other transportation questions that may occur. Okay, all right. So I'll, I'll give you the floor. Perfect, okay, let me share my screen. Um, can everyone see the presentation? Um, yes, we can. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so Thank you, everyone. Um, as I said, my name is Casey Garrell, and I'm a project manager at New York City Department of Transportation. And I'm joined tonight um, by Charles McKernan from New York City Department of Design and Construction, who is um, leading the design and construction of this capital project, as well as members from AI Engineers, um, who is our lead design consultant. Um, and they'll be able to answer any kind of more technical questions. But I want to give a broad um, overview of the Washington Avenue Safety Improvements Project, which is a capital reconstruction. Um, it's a pedestrian uh, multi-site project. Uh, so there's two locations. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, the first location is at Washington Avenue, Classen Avenue, and President Street, um, right by the entrance to the New York Botanic Garden or the, Bro the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. And the second location is at Washington Ave and Montgomery Street. Um, and just for information, there's a third location, which is in, um, I believe, uh, CB8 at Washington and Pacific Street. But um, we're not going to go over that location as it's um, outside of CB9's district. Uh, so a little background of the project goals and why we're reconstructing these two intersections. So the, the primary goal is to construct geometric safety improvements. Um, improve pedestrian accessibility, uh, reduce crossing distances, and improve the line of sight for pedestrians. Um, we want to reduce vehicle and pedestrian conflicts, mostly by reducing the speed of turning vehicles. We want to improve the traffic signal operations at Washington Ave and President Street, and install new wayfinding signs um, in proximity to the Botanic Garden. Some safety data for these two locations. Um, looking at the past five years, there were seven pedestrian injuries, one of which was severe, um, one bicyclist fatality, um, and a total of 37 injuries at both of these locations. And, and most of these injuries were at um, Washington and Classen, as that's where most of the vehicle and pedestrian conflicts are occurring. So now I'm just going to go over the existing and proposed conditions. Starting with the location at Washington Ave and Classen Ave. Uh, so the first kind of main issue we see at this intersection is that there's um, no crossings actually to the Brooklyn Botanic Garden entrance. Um, so that's shown with the number one where the two arrows are um, kind of towards the front gates of the Botanic Garden. The crosswalk is actually located very far south of the intersection. So um, it doesn't really make sense to have no crossings to a very major um, pedestrian uh, destination. Uh, the second issue we see at this intersection is the high speeds turns from Washington Ave to Classen Avenue. So it's kind of a, a direct route for this neighborhood to the BQE um, heading towards the north. Due to the angle of the geometry, we see um, vehicles take this at a very high rate of speed. Um, and there's been some conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians. So we want to calm that turn. And then the final issue that we're looking to resolve is the poor visibility for the southbound turn from Washington to Classen Avenue. That's shown by the number three. Um, so you turn onto what is kind of like a slip lane for President Street, and there's a short little stopping area with a stop sign. Um, and it's difficult to see cars who are coming up Classen, which are typically doing so at a high rate of speed. And there is a high likelihood for potential crashes at that um, intersection. 
So the main proposal, so going over kind of those three issues that we see, the first is that we will be shifting the crosswalks to that location at the Botanic Garden entrance to the north, shown here as number one, so two direct crossings um, into the, the Botanic Garden's main entrance. Uh, number two, we'll be constructing a large new concrete sidewalk um, shown in yellow on the southern portion to close that slip lane onto Classen Avenue and create a more um, organized right turn um, so cars aren't taking it at a high rate of speed, um, providing more pedestrian space, providing more visibility, um, and just creating a more kind of standard um, three-way intersection, um, which is more typical throughout the city, um, where everyone kind of knows what's going on. And then number three, by also moving all these movements up towards just one defined intersection, um, cars turning left from southbound Washington will also be able to yield to cars turning right. Um, from the northbound Washington, which is a much more typical movement. And we um, expect a more reduced, uh, reduced conflicts between turning motorists and each other. Um, as part of this project, we're looking to preserve the tree that's currently on the Green Street on the triangle um, on at Classen Avenue. We're also looking for additional locations for new trees. Um, and we're also proposing a new wayfinding sign um, at this location on the southern end of the, the the new sidewalk. Um, it's kind of a bit of a confusing area due to the street grids here. So providing some wayfinding for pedestrians who are coming from the garden to know, you know where other local destinations are in the neighborhood. Moving to the second location, this is at Washington Avenue and Montgomery Street. Um, the primary issue here is that there is a long crossing for pedestrians. Um, it's not um, controlled by any um, traffic control. So it's just a kind of turning vehicles yield to pedestrians. Um, and due to the geometry, we see southbound vehicles can take this um, quite quickly and maybe not yield to people who are in the crosswalk. So we'll be constructing a curb extension on the northeast corner, uh, shown here in yellow, uh, and then providing upgraded pedestrian ramps um, on all the surrounding corners um, to improve ADA accessibility. Just an outline of the project schedule. So this is a fiscal year 2023 project. So we're expecting design to wrap up in June of 2022, um, looking to advertise and award the or advertise the project in August of 2022, um, bid the project in September of 2022 and construct the project um, have to move this window, in May of 2023. And the expectation is that's an 18 month um, project construction duration. From start to end. And that includes the location at um, Washington Pacific as well. So there'll be more work happening um, farther along the corridor outside of CB9. And that's it for this proposal. So I'll open up to any questions and um, can also rely on my colleagues at DDC and AI engineers for any more technical questions that you have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is it time for questions? Um, Madam Chair, can I speak? Carmen, is she there? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay, Hi, very Felice. good. Go ahead. Okay, uh, this is Felice Robertson, um, a long, long time resident on Washington Avenue. Oh, I was raised here. So um, the suggestions that or plans you plan to make, I'm gonna begin with the uh, traffic congestion on Clawson Avenue. Um, that triangle which you speak of, um, it's true that the turn, which the bus turns on Clawson Avenue may be a concern, um, but you have a camera there that um, I'm trying to understand the use of that camera because it, uh, it doesn't seem to serve a purpose for that corner. Um, the corner you suggest, which was Clawson Avenue, um, they need to see something visible there to know that you, know, you have to yield um, to protect the pedestrians. Um, so this, this, uh, this tongue or this curve extension, I should say, it creates congestion. Um, you know, it's already congested as it is, and that doesn't seem to solve the problem, but creates more of a problem because whenever there's congestion, you know, people are speeding to get to wherever they need to go, and they don't have time to wait. That's what congestion brings, aggravation, frustration, and they need to go where they need to go. 
Okay. Um, you spoke of uh, curve extensions on Montgomery, Washington and Montgomery. That does not work either. What we need is a speed camera, um, some sort of some sort of um, indication there that you must slow for the pedestrians. We are crossing Montgomery to get to the bus that's on that corner, okay? And it's very hard to do so when you have cars speeding to turn, okay? The tongue does not help, okay? I've seen cars go on top of the tongue, okay? Um, now, I don't know if you've seen pictures of accidents that occurred on that corner where cars have gone into the building there on 921 Washington Avenue, in, in addition to the store here on a corner, J&J &J store. Um, it's very dangerous for us. And my girlfriend's daughter almost died. She was completely ran over. She had to get a hip replacement because cars were speeding on Washington Avenue. Now, on Sullivan, there is a speed camera there, which serves no purpose. Once they pass that, that uh, parameter of the distance, they speed to pass the light that's on Crown. We need an indication on Montgomery. We need to slow them there, okay? And as for Clawson Avenue, there has, do you know right now, there's no light on that corner? There's no light on that corner. So you can't even see who's turning on that block. And, um, and maybe we need to trim the tree that's in the middle of that triangle so people can see us, okay? Let's try that. We're trying to do things that's effective and not um, gonna be, create more of a havoc, you know? So this is, this is, this is my, my suggestion to prevent congestion because we're, we're dealing with a lot of it and people are angry out here, you know? And um, the bus is extremely important to us, the 48 bus. We got the bus back online and, and with the help of um, Tish James that we got that bus line back online. So we don't wanna lose that bus line, okay? I thank you for your attention. Yeah, so I can, I can respond to a couple of, um, or try to respond to all of your comments. Um, so I guess I'll start with the bus. So we are accommodating the bus. We're not rerouting any bus or even changing any stops. So the bus will um, continue to make this turn. We've um, run this through New York City Transit, which is the bus operator. We've, um, we, we design all this to model bus turns. Um, it'll be able to make this no problem. Um, there is a side extension of the bus stop to the north to make it even more easy for the bus to get to this bus stop. Um, so that's, that's still being accommodated. Um, in regards to um, comments about congestion, so the overall operations at this intersection aren't really changing. Um, the signal timing is staying practically the same. Um, it's just, it's really just making the points of interaction where someone's turning and there's a, there could be a pedestrian there the, um, more standard to how more, most intersections in the city are. Um, we, like the, the, the traffic operations will pretty much function how they are today. There won't be necessarily an improvement and there won't necessarily be a degradation of, of like travel times or, or really like overall speeds. Um, it's really just rationalizing where people are turning and where they're um, crossing the street as well. And then in regards to speed cameras, so this project focus, focuses more on capital reconstruction and you know, geometric changes and concrete work. Um, we can put in a separate request for speed cameras through our automated enforcement team. Um, Diana can help with that. And that can happen on a totally separate track from this capital project. Um, they're kind of like two separate um, solutions and possibilities that, that, that don't necessarily um, have to happen in tandem. And then I guess in regards to Washington and Montgomery, we do, you know, we, we do install curb extensions throughout the city. Um, we, we see them have really um, good benefits from slowing turns, um, shortening crossing distances, so there's less time for pedestrians who are exposed in the street. Um, and we can, you know, you know, work with our automated enforcement team to look at um, new locations for speed cameras to, to solve some of the issues that you're having um, at this location. Okay, one last thing. Um, on Montgomery, we find that the fire department trucks always turn on this corner. And so if I may, if I may say to you, please, sidewalk extensions does not work. We already lost 
two parking spaces on that corner. We need to work it another way because the fire trucks already are having a problems with turns. The extensions will make it worse. Sidewalk extensions, this is my suggestion. I'm telling you, it does not work. I live here. I've been living here for years to see that in other places it doesn't work and to see the function of my community, how it, it there's not even one here now. And to have one, to know it doesn't work because they have difficulties as it is right now. Yeah, so we do, we reach out to FGNY, we get everything approved by them. And I would say that like curb extensions do increase sidewalk space, they do slow turns, but, and this one isn't really even reducing parking at all. It's it's kind of encroaching into the parking area by just a couple of feet. So it's just shifting cars that are already parked there. It's not really removing parking in it. And it really just repl like replaces space that is like the parking lane. So like if you didn't have the curb extension here, there would be a car right up at the crosswalk blocking a fire truck. So this actually does provide a little bit more room because it's not quite as wide as a car. Um, and it also provides more visibility for fire department trucks turning at the intersection too. But we can, you know, double check that the fire truck operations would would function under this condition uh, just to address that concern. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mention already that there is no cars on the corner. So therefore, um, they still having problems in turning. There's no cars to obstruct any um, fire department trucks to come through as it stands right now. So um, I, I'm giving you I'm giving you what I know. I live here. OK, but thank you. Yeah, that's very appreciated. I mean, we, we that's why we come to these meetings and we will we'll double check with FDNY and, and ensure that there's no impacts to their operations. Hi, my name is Valerie Fleming. I um, just want to make a comment with regard to the proposed turn on Washington by Botanic Gardens, if we can go back to that slide. So um, currently we have the bus that's going, I guess, northbound up to Clawson, is that correct? Yeah, correct. So yeah. you're proposing the bus to go up Washington and then make the right turn and then make the left onto Clawson, is that correct? Yeah, it's like kind of like a two-stage turn. So is there, because um, there are different things that happen, inclement mode weather and things of that nature, is it a way that we can propose a bus only to go up that slip so that the bus doesn't have to make any excessive turns just to go straight? Because during inclement weather, um, I'm not sure how wide you're gonna make that particular area, but will that particular bus, and are there um, other types of uh, delivery vehicles that may have to go up that particular um, area? would they be able to make that turn successfully going through that slip where there's also school buses and students and things of that nature that would go there? I understand the safety part. Don't get me wrong. If you want to, you know, after all these years, you decided to put a sidewalk in a better path for the, tr the walking traffic or the pedestrian traffic to go. But um, for the bus, is it really necessary for them to go up and left and make an additional turn, especially during inclement weather, um, as opposed to maybe a, a proposed bus only going up that slip so that they can go and just continue straight up that particular path? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, in regards to the bus only slip, um, I think there would be a concern that, you know, other vehicles are gonna use it, um, which then would create kind of some complexity of if a car is coming out and a car who is obeying the rules and is making the right turn, like kind of where we have it, um, a potential for sideswiping swiping in that condition. Um, but what, is your, what are you doing now? Because that's already happening with the bus lanes that you have on um, the streets going up. I'm just using another incident, Rogers Avenue. You have the bus only lane and the cars go up that particular lane all the time. They said that there were supposed to be some cameras. There's maybe some buses that have cameras on there, but on the times when the bus isn't there to take a picture, yes, you do have the people that are obeying the traffic, but then you have the person who um, decides I'm not waiting and I'm gonna go up the bus slip and they still go up there. And then that kind of brings, I guess, a human nature thing. Oh, he went up there, she went up there, I'm gonna go too. So then lots of cars go into the lane in which it's supposed to be bus only. So I'm not sure, you know, I'm just trying to come up with some type of um, uh, uh, 
compromise? Because um, is there a way that you can maybe have a stoplight there or something? Because I think coming up Washington Avenue, there's a lot going on that may not have been considered. Now, when you go down to the southern end down there by Western Beef, where you've cut that slit off, so all of the traffic is coming up Washington Avenue. So you have the, the traffic that wasn't coming up Washington Avenue before, now coming up Washington Avenue. Now you're changing that particular situation right there up at Crown Street, you're, um, excuse me, Montgomery Street. You're changing the situation at President Street. But for some reason, you haven't taken into consideration, to me, the, a, a sore part on the top of Eastern Parkway, where the, the museum is, where there's an opportunity for a car to come in and turn left. If you're going easterly on Eastern Parkway, making a right onto Washington Avenue, a few feet in, you can make a quick left in to, to go down, I guess, between the school, the deaf school, and go down on the service road. You know, you're keeping that open. And to me, there are far more people that are at that intersection than at President and Clawson um, and Washington, because I kind of come that way all the time. And people are kind of walking down from the museum and coming down. So there's, to me, now, this is just me, because I'm not sure. Have you had an opportunity to walk that area to see for yourself? Yeah, so I actually used to live in CB9. Um, and I went to the Botanic Garden like almost every weekend. Um, so I'm very familiar with the area. And I guess just kind of backtracking to some of your other comments, I think your kind of comment about enforcement in bus lanes is very valid and it's a big issue that we have citywide. And I think it's kind of an, a reason to not do a bus only lane at this location because it would be such a small stretch that it, um, compliance would be very low. So and have you course, had a bus, have you written a bus to take the right and the, to go straight and then take the right, the left and then the right to go up that area to see how comfortable they are or how easy it is to go through that particular area? Is it wide enough? Is it given, are you gonna build something in? Because that to me is like extra work for the bus driver, even though the goal is for safety. Because I noticed that you showed some statistics for safety. You said five years, but that went back to 2014 to 2018, and we're almost in 22. So do you have any data that shows what has gone on recently in the last, in the real last five years? So due to, there's a delay in the safety data due to COVID and traffic patterns and travel patterns were so different. So we are using a little bit more um, historical data until we get updated safety data that kind of accommodates for like, you know, everyone being home more, not as much traffic on the streets. So there was, we're kind of still working through updating our safety data to account for all of that. So, um, and then in regards to bus operations, um, we haven't tested it yet because this doesn't exist. So it would um, there's not really a way to like see how comfortable the turn would be under this proposed so, condition. So, but, so currently, oh. do you know the footage of how wide that particular area is? Because it doesn't yeah. look like, are you, I, I'm not sure if I could see whether or not you're changing the actual configuration of the slip that's right there right now. Um, to yeah, so, so we're pulling this back to be a very big corner. Let me see if so right here where my mouse is, is the existing corner. Um, so we are widening the area to accommodate the bus turn. So we we use software that models, we have like a, a model of the bus and we model it through going through the turn and making sure there's sufficient clearances so the, you know, there's room for air for a bus driver to actually be able to make the turn under an idea, like a, a multitude of scenarios. Um, so it allows for like, you know, if there's a pile of snow at the corner that the bus can still make the turn. Um, so, so we are shaving. I'm sorry to cut you off, but so that I'm clear on the turn, you put your mouse somewhere over to the left, but is is the yellow part extending out so that the drug bus driver would have to come past this sidewalk, which lessens the space that he has to turn? Is that is, am I reading that correctly? I'm not sure. I'm not the engineer, so I'm just. No, no, that's to totally fine. Let me actually. I'm going to draw in the existing triangle because I think that might be helpful. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so that's the existing triangle in red. Um, so you can see that we are, we are shaving back the triangle so a bus can actually make the turn. A bus wouldn't be able to make the turn under the existing triangle. Um, okay. so, so we are like kind of drastically pulling that back. Um, and this is both to accommodate FDNY and buses. Um, so it's really not, there, there's really no extensions per se. It's really just closing the slip lane currently 
and shaving back the triangle to make it all function um, for buses and for for trucks. And you, you mentioned, you know, deliveries and stuff. We also model um, freight trucks to make sure that they can get to all parts of the city as well. So yeah, I, I would just like to add on as part of the design, we do do a it's called an auto turn analysis. We did that for um, buses for this intersection. We did it for fire trucks for all the intersections and trucks for all the intersections. That's part of the monitoring. We only do it for buses and long bus routes. Um, it's carefully reviewed. It's 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 reviewed by um, DOT. They go through it extensively. So there's a very extensive review process through that. I mean, where the merit of the project was is that um, it's the main gateway to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. We're trying to make it pedestrian friendly. Um, and that is the major mode of transportation in, uh, that's going to the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Botanical Gardens are pedestrians. So we're trying to enhance that. We did have a fatality there. And the fatality I understand was created by the slip lane um, because cars were rushing down there and the bicyclists I understand was hit and killed by that. So we're trying to address um, pedestrian safety. We're trying to address bicycle safety. Uh, there's a school in the corner to the right there. So I mean, there's, we're trying to put all these aspects together on this. And uh, this is what we came up with. But the MTA did look at these drawings and they had no comments on them. So they did have an opportunity. We'll continue to bring them, um, uh, we'll continue to review this with them to, to make sure that that process is also included in, in the review of this project. Thank you so much for your comment, sir. Um, and I appreciate the, the added information. It's just that, as Ms. Robertson said, we kind of live here and we see it all the time. And we oh. do know about safety. And we, we, we really do want to have it a little safer for the people because, I mean, you know, now with the additional traffic that's going up Washington Avenue that's been caused by the different changes in the way the, the, the landscape.